Now we're going to take a look at some induced seismicity that's associated with hydraulic fracture stimulation. We're back in Oklahoma and we're down in this area. Remember down in this area there was not very much, there wasn't a significant amount of um, uh, saltwater disposal wells. This, this was basically an area of enhanced oil recovery operations. This would be Texas down here, Oklahoma here. This is the main area of um, uh, induced seismicity in the northern part of Oklahoma and southern part of Kansas. However, in this field, which is located um, uh, somewhere uh, around in here, uh, they were drilling a well and completing a well. This is the historical earthquake activity. So you can see there was a lot of, there are a lot of earthquakes that occur in this area over the past um, uh, 115 years or so. These are seismograph stations that are located in the area. So there's good, good general regional coverage of the seismicity that's uh, taking place in this area. And this is the location of the well that was stimulated, and you can see the events that are believed to be associated with the process of hydraulic fracture stimulation are located about two to three kilometers from the injection well, from the, uh, uh, from the uh, well that's being stimulated. So this is a, an article which is, you can access online and by Holland 2013. So in this diagram here, you can see that the well location over here, you can see some faults in the background uh, nearby the well that's being completed. <clears throat> the seismic events that you see here are colored um, by kind of initial and late. Uh, there was a period of inactivity when the hydraulic fracture stimulation effort was ceased because of bad weather and these events are separated in, in time that way primarily uh, uh, due to that weather event. Over here on the right you can see the depths are largely between, uh, between 1.5 and 3, 3.5 kilometers uh, below the surface and the distance from the well looking along this cross section here where these clusters are all projected onto this uh, cross section line BB prime. Again they occur in that 1.5 to 3 kilometer range. You can see some of the earlier events and then the later events. Down here we have the events plotted by magnitude. So the magnitudes are ranging from about 0.5 to 3 so these are events that are potentially destructive. You know, they're, you're, they're certainly going to be felt uh, above 2.5, so some of these event, events would be felt events. These are the events that occurred during early fracking of the well. Uh, after the fracking effort was dropped because of or halted because of bad weather and then uh, restarted, uh, we began to see additional events, not quite as high as before, but uh, certainly of concern. And this is basically the background on the seismicity that is believed to be associated with stimulation of this particular well. Now the relocation of these events, uh, we have poor resolution vertically, but uh, most of the wells, most of the events are clustered down here between um, their locations, um, 1.5 kilometers to 3, 3.5 kilometers in, uh, in depth. And um, most of these events, the majority of the events, occurred during the stimulation of this second stage. So. Uh, there may have been a direct connection between whatever was going on during the stimulation of this stage in the well and uh, some fault or uh, some other avenue of connection to um, allow fluids to migrate and for pressures to increase in this region leading to failure on the, on the faults in, in this area. 
Here's an example from the Boland uh, Shale, which is in the United Kingdom, and they're very much against fracking. And uh, primarily because of what happened here in the uh, Boland Shale. And um, this, this has received a lot of um, um, kind of a, a public outcry against uh, fracking. And you can see where most of the events that did occur occurred during the fracking process, during the initial stage, large volume of injection. We have um, events occurring. Uh, during a smaller injection volume, not too much happening. Come over here, raise the injection volume again, and we see the occurrence of more events. This is the flow back, and you can see this. the difference between the flow back and the injection volumes would be the amount of fluid remaining in the formation. So I think the lesson that I would take away from their experience is to be aware of the complex structure in the area. This is the region of um, England where the stimulation uh, of the Priest Hall well took place. And this is the Priest Hall well. And you can see that there are obvious faults in this area. And so, you know, it's a complexly faulted area. And um, you would want to know what the maximum compressive principle stress orientations were in this area. Now, unfortunately, there are, there are not very many observations. Of, I think there's one up here of uh, SH max in this area. However, taking a look at the group of events over to the east and south, we get an average trend of about north 34 west, and that's shown by this blue line here. And this is the area where the, uh, uh, the Priest Hall well was uh, stimulated. Uh, we have this one estimate here. We have some estimates up here to the north. Uh, but generally, we don't have a whole lot of uh, SH max orientations over in this region. So we do the best that we can, and we would kind of guess that faults that were close to this trend of SH max at a low angle are faults most likely to fail, uh, maybe unstable, maybe critically stressed, maybe likely to fail if the pore pressure is increased. So if we come back here and look at these faults, uh, we can see that, well, we're kind of, you know, this, this would be the SH max trend, uh, not really a, maybe a, a real low angle, but, but close to, uh, an angle close to that of SH max. So this would automatically raise some concern. The uh, SH max orientations are uh, at a relatively small angle to some of the faults in this area. And if we look at this regional uh, view, we can see that uh, the normal faults forming a grobin in this area are certainly oriented at uh, low angles. Uh, this, this region of the grobin is certainly oriented at a low angle to SH, uh, SH max. So, so one would go in here with a lot of concerns to begin with, I would think. And uh, this is a seismic line that we're going to look at. It goes um, almost through the Priest Hall well. And so this is the Priest Hall well. And you can look at the uh, fault interpretation here. There are some faults that haven't been interpreted. Complexly faulted area. <clears throat> Lots of faults. Have a lot of growth uh, over, to the, uh, over to the west. And this is the area where the magnitude 2.3 earthquake occurred during the... Um, uh, injection, the stimulation of the Priest Hall well. So this complex structure, the orientation of the maximum compressive principle stress would have been a deterrent, I think, to completing a well in this area. So the known instances of fracturing are isolated. Oklahoma, some in the UK, the Horn River Basin, Montney Reservoirs in British Columbia, the Duvernay Play in Alberta, and the Utica Play in Ohio. But if we take a look at the number of wells that have been stimulated, uh, using numbers about 2015 out of 3 million wells, 70 are believed to be associated with hydraulic fracture stimulation. This is about one in every 43,000. So the next uh, time we're going to 
look at more disposal well induced seismicity and uh, some recommendations for management. But um, these are the kinds of problems that you can run into with hydraulic fracture stimulation in the limited number of cases that, um, that one does see. It appears that people have ignored uh, some of the basic relationships that they should be more careful about, and that would be the relationship of SH Max to uh, any faulting in the area. So we'll uh, talk to you next time.